Welcome back to the circus and welcome to the next edition. This is my favorite knives from 2022 and that kind of 60 to 125, $130 range, somewhere in there, right? So let's talk about them. Uh, you notice there's a lot fewer. That's because most of my collection is budget knives. Um, but we try and hit in all price ranges. So I have a few more. And there is one that is curiously absent because it is out visiting another channel. And that is the Drop Bear. The Kaiser Drop Bear is out visiting Zach over at Zach Stuff EDC. And I hope he is enjoying it. But what about these? Uh, and I'll tell you where the drop bear fits into the overall scheme of things. But how do these fit in? Not all of these necessarily came out in 2022. My experience with them was last year, except for this one. This one just came in. It, it, it was released last year. <clears throat> So it's going to kind of get a, a bit of a pass. Uh, it probably would not make the top three anyway, if I'm being honest, but I've only had it for a few days. So um, just getting used to the Finch Harvester here. It is uh, just, it is a quality knife. It is a well-made knife. It is uh, beautiful in its own right. Um, it is uh, just not that familiar to me. And uh, as a result, I'm going to kind of set it off to the side for now. But uh, I know the Hogue K320 came out uh, probably before 2022. But I um, love, love, love this knife. It is fidgety enough. Has an awful pocket clip. <laughs> Actually, it's the texture on the handle that kind of destroys your pants. But uh, once you get used to that flipper slot, it's been a while since I carried it. Um, but uh, a great knife uh, coming in. You can find them on sale, especially the original version like this. Now they've gone to aluminum scales uh, with inlays. You could find this one on sale at times for like $110, 110 120 I think the actual price now has gone above what would be in this range, but uh, I got this one from Brother Sobex, uh, Brother Scott Sobex Scooter. Thank you, brother, for the trade. Um, and he got this from, from Brother Tyler over at Everyday EDC. Uh, and it's because... Uh, Brother Scooter bought this knife that I ended up with the forest because I was originally wanting to buy this knife and I would have ignored the forest had uh, had Scooter not bought this. But I still love it and uh, carry it on occasion when I can. But uh, all the other knives kind of get uh, get into the way a bit. Very fidgety, very capable. S30V steel. You can get coated or uncoated. You can also get a Tanto blade. Come in serrated partially serrated blades or the fine blade that you just saw there now um probably the smallest knife in this category uh there were a few other kaisers that i got last year as well and they were nice too but this is the one that stays in my collection and will probably never go anywhere i absolutely love this knife so don't be surprised when it ends up on the final three because the kaiser original 154 cm steel aluminum scales on this one the original original gunmetal um with the uncoated blade just a really solid, very compact, uh, simple, but elegant knife, in my opinion, that I very much love. Very fidgety, very quiet in its fidgetiness, which is very important at sometimes. So $85, it comes in towards the lower end of this scale. One of two that do uh this one also 85 dollars this is the orion scorpio this is the small version of the orion solaris 
with that distinctive clip point tip with some jimping on it and uh, really just uh, an, an overall fidgety great knife very useful as useful as anything out here and uh, just unique and fidgety and fun and somewhat affordable at $85 and that's shipped to your door and David ships incredibly fast. Uh, Orion Knives will take care of you. David has always just, since I got into knives in this community, David is absolutely one of my favorite people. And the Solaris and the Scorpio are both just amazing knives for the price. So, uh, 14C28 in steel, you can get coated or uncoated, you can get black with blue accents, you can buy a bunch of aftermarket scales and different color accents and stuff like that. Another reason I love Orion Knives, David goes out of his way to find aftermarket stuff that he can get for you to put on your knife to make it yours and it's always really affordable so take a look at orion knives if that piques your interest kaiser hogue usa if all american is you hogue is i think the only one out here that is 100 percent american all of these uh companies have American ties but uh, um, Kaiser and uh, uh, Finch and Devo and Tempest and Eutectic and Orion all are OEM'd out of China so um, a lot of American companies that are doing OEM work out of China and producing amazing knives in the process so if that's one of your things this is probably going to be your number one choice if you want all American. Next, the Devo Mash is it hit right at the end of the year. So it has the benefit of being the freshest knife on the table. Um, the satin is uh, so smooth. The, the reverse tux is breaking in, but the satin was like this out of the box. Titanium scales titanium hardware just an all-around classy and uh, just a good knife i mean is it super fidgety no but uh i mean it's got that sheep's foot it's got uh, a lot of things that i really like it's got a couple things i don't necessarily like uh, that aren't my favorite. I shouldn't say I don't like them, but like the hollow grind, I'm coming to like it, but uh, it's still, I prefer a high flat grind and uh, stuff like that, but um, a great knife nonetheless and uh, absolutely doing the trick and looking good at it. This one came in at, if you use no codes or something, just over $130. Um, with a code, it came in right around $120, $122, I think, somewhere in that range. Uh, it, it was gone in minutes, and uh, I am very fortunate to, uh, to have picked some up. So thank you again to Brian at Blue Creek Knives and Lefty and Colin over at Devo for uh, this really, really awesome design. And uh, look forward to what you guys are doing next. Speaking of friends in the community, we have David, we have Kevin and Colin, and we have Casey. <laughs> um, these are aftermarket scales from Blazeburger, made by Brother Bill, uh, and they make it even better. Oh, such a smooth, a smooth knife. Great neutral handle with a forward choil. You know I like that. Uh, sheep's foot. You notice that some of these are sheep's foot. Some are not, but um, all great knives. This one coming in around uh, when it had the G10 scales on it, it came in around $85. So, uh, you know, in that kind of lower end of this price range where these are getting in towards some of the, the higher end. In fact, let's, nah, we're going to keep this here. So uh, the pinion, you can still pick these up. They are, uh, I think they may have gone up a little bit, um, but on pre-order they were, I think, $75 actually for the G10 and $85 for the Micarta. And then after the pre-sale they went up a little bit. But um, a great knife, another, um, another great member of the knife community who designed that and who owns the company there. 
doing great stuff um, very much love this knife very 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 useful in my world so uh, this is kind of a, a tiny sheep's foot pairing knife it very if this were a fixed blade I would be uh, even more in love with it to be honest but uh, as a fairly fidgety folder um, it gets the job done and it has a useful blade shape so me and my sheep's feet uh, and last but definitely not least this is the Eutectic Trinity. This is Leong Ma's budget line. The Eutectic is um, a budget line that takes some of his custom folder designs and turns them into affordable knives. So I've not seen the custom version that this is based on, but uh, um, he is slated to come out with a copy of his Field Duty. I think it's the three inch version or three and a, I forget it's three or three and a half inch version, but very much, um, uh, very fidgety, multiple deployment options, very, very lightweight coming in at, I think just under three and a half ounces, uh, very responsive, great detent, um, just a really cool design. Uh, one side is linerless and just this thing is a big knife that's easy to carry and it's fairly fidgety and uh, all four of these in the lower part are 14 c 28 in and uh, so great stainless steels across the board on all of these same thing with the Kaiser drop bear which is in 154 cm same as these two so, which ones are my favorite? Well, I go back and forth here. <laughs> Either one of these could be here. I think because of multiple deployment options, I keep wanting to give it to the Trinity. Um, this one just is sheer fidgetiness and is uniquely useful. I didn't think it would be nearly as useful as it is, but this thing is supremely useful for me for opening boxes and stuff like that. Um, that little uh, divot out on the front that lets you get your finger in there so I can control the depth of that. It just, it just feels natural to do that, to open a box. So uh, this one, even though I don't get to carry it very often, is one of my favorites to carry. These are all favorites to carry, so this is kind of killing me. But this side is basically my favorite three that are here. Now, um, oh, man, I could easily take either one of these and sub them in for either one of these. And the uh, the drop bear could easily be there too. I think I might swap the the drop bear out here or here um, as far as fidgety, but this one is one of the most capable and slicey out here. Super thin behind the edge, and just a good design um, for for a lot of things. I need a little bit bigger folder for. So because of its size compared to a lot of these guys, I have a small, I have a medium that might be swapped out with the drop bear, or this one might go instead. Um, but yeah, the drop bear would definitely be in the top three. I'm just not sure which one of these two spots it would take. So uh, these are my top three, and all of these are amazing knives that I honestly don't think you could go wrong with. It's a matter of personal tastes, ergos, materials, stuff like that. If that matters to you, then these may be something that you would prefer, you know, piece them in over here at will. Um, but again, as I said, if Made in USA is your primary concern, then the Hogue K320 here is probably the one, uh, the one for you. Or another Hogue, you could put another Hogue a Deca or one of the other Axis locks in here too, and I would probably be just fine with that as well. But that's it. That's all I've got for you today, kids. So until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. This is Grumpy, and I'm out.